On July 18, 2015, HLN hosted a debate on transgenderism featuring conservative writer Ben Shapiro and transgender journalist Zoe Turr. The debate became quite heated as the issue of gender pronouns came up, and Shapiro threw out his trademark phrase. Forget about the disrespect, facts don't care about your feelings. Turr, who was sitting next to Shapiro, leaned over, grabbed the back of his neck, and told him, You cut that out now, or you'll go home in an ambulance. That was definitely not the most ladylike thing to say on a televised debate. I, you, we, it, they. They're just pronouns. By definition, they replace a noun in a sentence. On the surface, they seem relatively non-confrontational and harmless. However, as many of you know, specific pronouns can spark fiery debates academically, politically, publicly, and privately. But before we jump into the controversial topic of gender pronouns, consider subscribing and hitting the bell icon to get notified when the next kind of viral video comes out. We've got some really interesting videos coming up that you won't want to miss. The use of gender pronouns, such as he or him and she or her, can make assumptions about the person you're speaking about. But what if those assumptions were wrong? Would you correct yourself and use the proper pronoun? Who determines which pronoun to use in the first place? For the transgender community, using the correct pronoun can mean feeling accepted in their self-identified gender, being respected for their choices, and showing kindness to the ostracized. It shows the open-mindedness of an individual and allows others to express compassion to a minority group of people in their community. Sounds rather nice, doesn't it? People getting along and respecting each other? And yet, there may be more profound implications to this that have not yet been explored. For example, what happens if we acknowledge the self-identified gender of a person, even if they are wrong? What if we made laws that prohibited people from saying offensive pronouns directed at trans people? Jordan Peterson takes this argument head on and has strong opinions about this topic. His words are often the antithesis of the gender pronoun movement, and he often becomes a person of interest in these debates. Unfortunately, his cold and logical approach can often come across as rude and unkind. The claim was basically, well, it's something like, why doesn't the mean professor just play nice and, and respect people by using their pronouns? It took me like three weeks to unpack that. Who gets questioned about pronoun use? I don't know why the hell I use the pronouns I use. I use them because they're part of the language. But what has Peterson actually said about using gender pronouns? And what does it contribute to the overall argument? For starters, Peterson has publicly been critical of legislation that deals with enforcing alternative gender pronouns. The Canadian bill C-16 proposed adding gender identity and orientation to its Human Rights Act, denying someone the ability to discriminate based on the gender someone identifies with. Peterson argued that the government is more or less trying to gain linguistic supremacy disguised as compassion. There is room for compassion on an individual level. However, Institutions should not be forcing people to either use alternative pronouns that they are uncomfortable using or making people disclose their preferred pronouns. Why are you against the use of alternate pronouns? I'm, not, I'm against the use of, of le legislation to determine what words are that myself and other people are required to utter. But would you use alternate pronouns if a student asked you to? I think I've made my position on that clear already. Well perhaps not to our audience at home who are just being introduced to this, would you use alternate no. pronouns? And why not? I, because I don't believe that other people have the right to determine what language I use, especially when it's backed by punitive legislation. What if a trans person stealthily lives their life as a gender they don't identify with, but still wants privacy and discretion? Peterson knows how to stir the pot, even if his points are logical. According to him, Having someone wanting him to use alternative pronouns such as Z or Zer is nothing more than a person wanting you to engage in their narcissistic power play. That's pure narcissism at work, by the way. Strong words for sure. So what of it then? Do we not use someone's pronouns simply because freedom of speech trumps human rights? Or is there a way to bring respect compassion and kindness into the equation. Does using the wrong pronoun diminish women's rights or men's rights? Does using self-identified pronouns cause unintended consequences for the future? These are tough questions to answer and questions that will continue to fan the flames of argument and debate across the web for a long time. So what do you think? 
Should we be using alternative gender pronouns? Let us know in the comment section below and hit that subscribe button to never miss another kind of viral video.